Fantastic to be here. Packed audience. Didn't expect this when uh, Roger Federer is probably out on court right now uh, in the uh, Wimbledon men's finals. Um, when I was creating this talk, uh, I was thinking, let's make it something contextual. Let's talk about something slightly different. Um, and it's just after lunch on the final day of the conference. Um, I wanted to check that you're uh, still pumped up with excitement. So uh, hype to stimulate, to excite, to pr promote or publicize. Hype, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Like, we're all at the center of it at the moment as data scientists, Pi Data. There's a huge amount of papers being published um, every week uh, uh, at Archive. Um, the industry is accelerating at such a rapid pace. Um, so there's a lot of hype going on at the moment around uh, data science, the industry. And then there's also the hype cycle. Uh, so I planned a really uh, theatrical uh, talk to kind of fit in with this uh, theme of uh, the hype cycle. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, Ehrlich from uh, Silicon Valley uh, stole my lighting setup uh, to present uh, Pied Piper. But the good news is, uh, at least there's <laughs> not that many spotlights on me uh, today, so if something goes wrong, uh, like it did with, with Erlek, uh, yeah, maybe you won't notice. <laughs> so what is the hype cycle? Well, it consists of uh, Proof, Mr. Porter, P. Diddy, DJ Khaled. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, Proof uh, and the Mr. Porter were and are uh, hype men for Eminem. Uh, Notorious, uh, well, uh, P. Diddy was a hype man for Notorious uh, B.I.G., as I'm sure you're all familiar with. And uh, DJ Khaled, well, <laughs> need I say more? DJ Khaled is a hype man for DJ Khaled. He's the best, right? So we can expand this as well. So Eminem collaborated with uh, Rihanna um, and uh, <laughs> DJ Khaled has repeatedly been saying that he really wants to uh, collaborate with uh, Eminem. Hasn't had the opportunity yet, unfortunately. Um, so uh, <laughs> actually the hype cycle is uh, not about all of that, but you may have noticed in, the, in that process we've ended up uh, connecting all this data together. And that does come back to the theme of the talk. So uh, actually the hype cycle is a report uh, by Gartner, a global research and advisory firm. Uh, and uh, emerging technologies, so it comes back to this point, emerging technologies require revolutionizing the enabling foundations that provide the volume of data needed. Um, for and advanced compute power and the ubiquity enabled ecosystems. The shift from siloed technical um, infrastructure to ecosystem enabled platforms is laying the foundations for completely new business models and forming the bridge between the humans and uh, technology. So Gartner have recognized that uh, knowledge graphs um, just like this one, uh, or maybe not so much this one, are key to uh, key technology uh, to enable this trend. I've always pictured myself as a bit of a fashionista. Um, my lifelong fascination with the fashion and the machine learning uh, led me to become a lead data scientist at a Farfetch. Um, so at Farfetch, I'm pursuing my vision of uh, reimagining re retail to create a smart and personalized uh, shopping experience. I focus on the intersection of machine learning and uh, knowledge representation, so uh, things like knowledge graphs, to build novel solutions that can improve the customer search and browsing experience. So there's a following on uh, quite nicely from the uh, following talk. So now I'm in a team named uh, Inspiration Data Science. So uh, where would this talk be without me attempting to uh, inspire you uh, beyond uh, the uh, hype men and hype women? Um, so, 
as you can see, I've got, I have uh, used the state-of-the-art uh, cutting-edge uh, Photoshop skills to uh, <laughs> copy and paste these images uh, from our website into this uh, presentation. So uh, this is a, a stunning uh, Pi Data themed out outfit um, <laughs> that I've uh, I personally uh, meticulously uh, curated, put a lot of time into this. Um, you can uh, buy each uh, element from our website. There's even a one, I one item is a two in one item. So uh, the, the snake, the snake soft toy uh, can be used uh, both as a, a soft toy, an accessory and also as a scarf. <laughs> also, we have um, uh, uh, Robert uh, Cavelli uh, snake print t-shirt and uh, just a Cavelli uh, snake buckle belt. And uh, if you're not so into the, uh, the uh, t-shirt, then there's also the uh, fantastic uh, Gucci uh, jewelry. So we have the snake ring uh, pendant necklace and also the uh, snake Gucci uh, garden snake inspired ring which would look absolutely fantastic uh, when you're typing and uh, sure to attract all the latest uh, talent to your teams. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what is Farfetch? Uh, Farfetch exists for the love of fashion. We believe in empowering individual individuality. Um, and our mission is to be the global technology platform for luxury fashion connecting creators, curators, and consumers. We operate a modular end-to-end -end technology platform, purpose-built uh, to connect the luxury fashion ecosystem worldwide, and the only truly global luxury digital marketplace at scale where lovers of fashion anywhere in the world can shop for an unrivaled range of incredible products, um, just like I've, I've shown, um, from the world's uh, best brands and uh, boutiques. Um, so, you, you know, as you can see, in the year 2018, uh, we had a 1.8, 1.4 billion uh, gross merchandise re gross merchandise value, and uh, with all the with all these expectations on the luxury fashion, um, comes a lot of challenges to in the data science to um, use the technologies and uh, also e expertise within the company um, to form a concrete and authoritative um, uh, fashion uh, um, uh, taxonomy and attributes um, for the entire uh, um, consumer experience. P.S. we're hiring. Um, so what is this graph thing? Uh, what is a uh, knowledge graph? Um, you might say, hey, I've got this lit bar graph visualization for you. It's fire. Well, that's not correct. That's not what this talk is about. So that's great, no one left. So you're all here um, for uh, knowledge graphs and uh, not uh, bar graphs. So it's a good start. So uh, why are we all here today? Uh, so we're taking a new perspective on uh, data, emphasizing relationships. Um, so uh, we're all here to connect. PyData provides a forum for us all to connect with each other, connect to uh, connect knowledge, sharing ideas, insights, and of course, where would it be without us sharing newly curated fashion, uh, Python uh, themed outfits. We're in a rapidly advancing industry. Where would we be without hype? Where would we be without connections? Where would archive be without archive sanity? Where would your research paper or your blog post be without hyping it up on uh, Twitter or Weibo or whatever social network it may be? So businesses and their products and services are all about entities and relationships. And up on the screen, you can see a couple of examples of entities and relationships in industry. So. Uh, for example, at Farfetch, uh, consumer searches a product with terms. Uh, you might have got an Uber here today where the driver provided a trip to you, the rider. And you may have a Facebook account uh, where you share your status uh, with friends. So the world we live in is all about 
these entities and relationships and connecting these. So how can we represent, analyze, and visualize this kind of data? What is a knowledge graph? How many of you, so uh, how many of you have heard uh, of knowledge graphs before? I assume there's a few, uh, yeah. And uh, how many of you have heard of uh, graph database before? So that's uh, awesome, roughly uh, uh, two thirds. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with the knowledge graphs and the graph databases, let's uh, kick this off uh, with a high level explanation of what a graph is and uh, then we'll take a deeper dive into the use cases and uh, more specifically um, application to uh, fashion and the luxury retail, uh, giving you a glimpse into how we are building and evolving an, a uh, fashion knowledge uh, graph at a far fetch. So in its essence, a graph is an abstract data type that requires two building blocks, nodes or entities and uh, relationships. So a knowledge graph can describe a collection of nodes or entities, in our case, uh, at Farfetch, uh, representing business and fashion entities, where each uh, node has, uh, cont contains information uh, referred to as properties. So in this case, the uh, properties could be something like a product ID or a language. Uh, so we have uh, numerous uh, language sites, so we may have uh, uh, language of English or uh, language of uh, Chinese or so forth. Uh, so we can capture that all in the graph. And then each, uh, we have these uh, labeled relationships as well between nodes. Um, so not only do we have um, the relationship itself, but we can also label them and attach uh, properties to these uh, relationships. So uh, in this example, we have a DNG DNG uh, tote bag, which is a product, has some properties on it, has a term, which is a uh, leopard print, and uh, that leopard print inherits uh, from another attribute, animal print, and then there's also uh, a synonym, which is another attribute of leopard spot. So we're connecting all this uh, data. It's all starting to get very semantic. So at the end of it, we have knowledge represented by a huge set of dots and lines. Dots and lines from uh, top to bottom, from side to side. Um, and trust me, it's very challenging uh, to persuade a business, especially one in the, lu the uh, luxury fashion industry, to support a uh, technology uh, which has a visually, visually uh, clashing sense of style. Um, dots and lines don't always work uh, too well together. Um, so uh, in many ways, that is a simple way of modeling data. What tends to be appealing, uh, which, which tends to be appealing to us as we often want to simpler things, especially in business where we need to maintain things and uh, evolve things over time. So it's a very, powerf very powerful, especially when the data is naturally uh, very connected with a meaningful relationships, as we'll uh, discover in a minute. Graphs are everywhere, they're all around us. Many of them uh, we, com we come across all the time on a daily basis. Um, so one of my favorite ways to explain a graph is uh, by looking at all this connected data uh, which surrounds us. So one example is the uh, London Tube Network. We have a bunch of stations as nodes and then we have the uh, connections, the relationships uh, between those stations. So how can I travel uh, from Pi Data uh, to get a bite to eat and say Soho? Um, or if this talk goes badly, uh, maybe a drink in Soho. <laughs> um, well, that would be an indirect path in this graph. Um, we could apply a graph theory, um, such as the shortest path algorithm, uh, to calculate the shortest distance. But uh, more interestingly, uh, we, we'd want to uh, ideally achieve a more valuable insight so we can apply weights and properties uh, along those, uh, to those connections and nodes in the graph, and then apply um, more complex graph analysis or graph-based AI um, to really deliver uh, valuable insights, which is uh, what I'll head on to next. So how many of you have, uh, how many of you remember the Panama Papers? Quite a lot of you. So yeah, th this was uh, one of the biggest stories in uh, 2016. 
uh, prior to uh, the other fantastic stories of the year. Donald Trump and uh, being elected and also uh, Brexit. Um, so it started, uh, the Panama, Panama Papers uh, started uh, with the two journalists at a German newspaper uh, who were uh, contacted by an anonymous source who uh, basically said, yo, I have a lot of data from a law firm that specializes in offshore tax accounts or something along those lines. So uh, offshore tax accounts, uh, those in the tax-friendly jurisdictions uh, can be used broadly for two purposes. Um, one, uh, ta legal tax planning, and the two, uh, illegal tax evasion. So uh, th the source uh, contacted the journalist and she said, I have a massive uh, data leak of all the internal documents uh, of this uh, law firm, uh, offshore law firm, uh, do you wanna uh, have a look? Um, the journalist, uh, uh, happened to say yes, um, and uh, ran uh, this all this data, th says uh, 2.6 uh, terabytes of data. They ran this through a massive pipeline of uh, algorithms and ended up with 11.5 million documents. They wanted to discover, are there any interesting, really interesting stories in this data that are worth uh, publishing in the, the papers? So investigative journalism is all about patterns, looking at how things are connected. Um, not so much uh, directly connected, as that's uh, often obvious. People already often know about the obvious uh, direct connections in a graph. Um, but it's, so uh, the focus uh, that we're usually interested in, especially in uh, a case such as investigative journalism, is on focusing on the indirected, I sorry, uh, indirectly connected uh, stuff. So. Um, Here's an example of such a pattern. So we have a pretty typical uh, pattern of a uh, person who has a bank account uh, with a, uh, uh, just a normal bank, a UK bank, US bank, whatever it may be. Um, uh, and then that person, we know that person lives at an address, so 123 Street or whatever. And then uh, uh, this other person, B, happens to also live at the same address. And that person is an officer of uh, Company X. And where is Company X registered? It happens to be registered with uh, Bahamas Bank. So uh, we have nodes and uh, relationships along with our attributes. And with that, we can model everything. So given an infrastructure um, with data of this form, whether it be 100 connections or a billion connections, at that point you can derive really valuable insights and a completely new perspective on data. How powerful are knowledge graphs? Well, the Prime Minister of Iceland at the time of, uh, uh, at the time of this uh, Panama Papers uh, um, uh, kicked off, uh, he ended up having to leave his job as he uh, hadn't disclosed that he had this account uh, in an offshore uh, tax haven. So uh, graphs uh, can be uh, pretty powerful and uh, by analyzing all these indirect uh, relationships particularly. So uh, the organization behind it, the ICIJ, ended up uh, winning the Pulitzer Prize uh, from this as well. So how can we do something similar in our own domain, whether it be retail, whether it be uh, finance, for example, uh, or something else? So how can we find the pearls amongst our data? Well, if you want a pearl without analyzing all the deep indirect connections yourself, may I suggest the uh, Delf Delfina, Delf Delfina uh, Delretta's uh, trillion earring. Um, or alternatively, if you're more of a diamond person, uh, we can rephrase the question as uh, how can we discover the diamond in this data? Well, in that case, you might be interested in the Jimmy Choo diamond sneakers available from Farfetch or Pledge. <laughs> so at Farfetch, uh, we're building up this uh, knowledge graph on uh, luxury fashion uh, products. Um, so in business, uh, and generally with knowledge graphs, we have uh, this a question of uh, generic versus uh, domain-specific knowledge graphs. So uh, generic uh, can include all, all of the various entities within the business, such as uh, customers' orders, uh, payments, promotions, reviews, 
and um, the fashion um, specific domain can include things like colors, so entities for colors, entities for materials, uh, concepts, trends, all, the, all of these wonderful things. And then of course, um, there's some overlap as well. So we have uh, products, brands, categories, all these kind of things, um, which form an overlap between generic and uh, domain specific knowledge graphs in this case. So how about Farfetch, how are we uh, building this up and what are the uh, some example use cases? Um, so uh, we have a free text search um, where we're, uh, so free text search is all about increasing a product discovery. So uh, in terms of, fa in the context of fashion, um, it could be uh, using a synonyms and the rich attributes to increase um, discovery for uh, consumers searching uh, products. Um, so uh, searching a skiing or um, winter sports or things like this. Um, so synonyms uh, as an example. Um, there's also semantic search. So semantic search is responsible for query understanding, um, seeking to improve the search accuracy by understanding the, the consumer's intent and the contextual meaning of terms to generate uh, more relevant results. We also have uh, some example use cases like recommendations. So how do we increase the relevance of, or based on the richer product attributes uh, and given these deep connections uh, within a graph. And then also we have uh, a number of other uh, example use cases such as ranking. So um, given a uh, product list page, for example, on an e-commerce site, how can we improve the ranking of uh, results on that, that list page? So how are we building the uh, fashion, knowledge, uh, a fashion knowledge graph? Um, well, our fa the uh, fashion knowledge graph uh, tackles the incredibly uh, complex task of uh, associating every product uh, with a concrete and uh, abstract uh, fashion concept. It allows the shoppers to search for the best products that fit their needs, uh, like uh, um, tops for Glastonbury or uh, maybe a snake, snake print uh, streetwear, for example. Um, so um, it all kicks off with a knowledge uh, collection. So um, uh, we have a bunch of fashion experts who can help uh, provide uh, expert knowledge in the fashion domain. And then uh, of course we also have a data-driven insights. So this is all about using um, data science and analytics um, to uh, analyze um, things like a search queries and also use uh, AI and modeling to um, extract as much value as we can um, in order to uh, collect uh, knowledge to build the graph upon. And then we have this uh, second layer of uh, taxonomy and the graph uh, construction. Um, so this is where we're uh, performing uh, more modeling and uh, knowledge cleaning, the pump up, and uh, also things like uh, entity resolution and uh, uh, schema mapping. So actually, um, looking more at the semantics of uh, these ent these entities, these and uh, building up, basically converting attributes into these semantic entities, and then uh, ingesting them into this uh, graph. Uh, so we end up with this uh, graph which associates, uh, fa in this case, uh, fashion taxonomy entities uh, with the business entities. And then there's a, a whole bunch of uh, potential uh, applications, uh, such as those uh, we just discussed. Um, so our universal fashion taxonomy um, uh, within the graph understands the nu nuanced and uh, complex relationships between fashion and the fashion lover. Um, so for example, uh, we include, uh, uh, things can be included such as materials, colors, trends, concepts, and concepts can also include uh, a range such as edit editorial, emotive, uh, seasonal, so in the fashion industry, seasonal seasons are a big thing. Um, and to, to uh, provide an example, uh, we can have a product one uh, where um, uh, we have this uh, uh, festi uh, festival, say, which is a concept, and the festival we happen to be uh, Glastonbury in this case. Uh, so we have a product one uh, which is, uh, has a connection with the Glastonbury, also a connection with the summer, and uh, of course also a connection with the snake prints. Um, then we have uh, an, a second example, so in this case, uh, exploring materials. Um, so as you can see, we, we can capture um, quite detailed semantics in the graph, uh, 
such as not only is this a denim, but we know that denim is a, a, a child of cotton, which is a child of textile, which is a child of materials. Uh, so we have that context, we have those semantics, and we have all of these connections building up, uh, such as uh, product two um, is uh, Acne brand, and we know Acne is a Swedish, uh, features Swedish design. And then uh, we can have uh, more descriptive attributes as well, such as uh, is this a product a skinny a fit or regular fit or these kind of things. And as well, uh, colors. So not only the standard colors uh, you might see on the filters on a website, but also uh, more diverse and granular colors, which enable a consumer to search for that term and discover those products. To provide an example of uh, synonym enrichment, uh, we can uh, take a look at this a puffer jacket. Um, uh, so uh, we can enable users to uh, consumers to discover this item, um, whether or not they search specifically for puffer jacket. Um, so they, by so they could search a quilted jacket or a down coat or a duvet jacket or any of these things. And uh, this graph will help uh, uh, con consumers to discover, not only discover products, but also discover much more relevant products by um, all, all these connections, uh, deep connections with uh, uh, rich and uh, granular attributes. So I bet you're thinking, what are some of the techniques that we're using for this, this kind of solution? Uh, so we're using a combination of uh, uh, computer vision, deep learning, NLP, uh, conflation, so handling uh, merging of, uh, of attributes of, of uh, terms, and inference. Uh, so uh, this is the best, best emoji I could find to describe inference. Uh, but <laughs> essentially, a given, one, <laughs> given one product, how can we infer um, what, uh, what other products have uh, relations with that, such as which other products may have a similar patterns, similar colors, and all, all of these good things. And then uh, finally, uh, crowdsourcing, um, or human in the loop type uh, approach to uh, in help ensure uh, uh, we get that expert, uh, incorporate that uh, expert uh, opinion as well. Uh, so at the end of the day, we have a richer product data by using this graph. So we're performing both internal enrichment and we can perform as well external enrichment uh, by things like uh, scraping and all, all of this kind of stuff um, to uh, build up a context of these uh, products in the, ca in the catalog. So we, uh, we start with the existing uh, catalog data and then we uh, apply uh, AI and modeling on this data and uh, then at uh, the top of the pyramid, um, we have a graph that connects all of these as rich and semantic entities. So we're turning this, uh, this as sparse um, uh, text data into, action, in, into a rich collection of things. So this is one of the big differentiators, where is going from uh, text to text to strings, two things. So we have, we're capturing all these semantics. So um, building a, uh, a graph in the Python uh, can be relatively simple. Um, so uh, there's a, a great library called Network X, uh, which many of you may be familiar with. And uh, we can declare a, gra a uh, directional graph, so that's one with arrows, um, uh, by just saying uh, NX, in this case, uh, dot digraph. And then uh, there's uh, sim simple commands to add nodes to that graph or uh, add edges. Uh, and those uh, nodes and edges can also feature properties, in this case, uh, a name such as a product A or a uh, weight such as uh, 0.75. And weights come in um, very handy uh, for more advanced analysis and a graph-based AI. So given that uh, code, uh, we can uh, produce, uh, the uh, library can also produce uh, this uh, visualization of the graph uh, using a matplotlib. So um, graph databases, um, queries written against graph databases are closer to how the data is modeled uh, than other query languages. Uh, great advantage of a graph database is that they eliminate the need to join multiple tables to find those relationships between your data points. Um, 
because the relationships are embedded in the uh, data themselves. So some of the top uh, graph databases are, um, or some of the main ones are uh, Neo4j, uh, which has uh, these Python packages for it, and there's also uh, AWS Neptune, and, uh, and uh, Azure Cosmos, and a number of other great uh, graph databases. Uh, one of the big advantages perhaps with Neo4j is it's not tied into any one particular uh, cloud platform, uh, so it's a, a more of a portable solution, although that does require um, perhaps uh, more setup and management uh, than uh, some of the built-in uh, solutions into cloud platforms. So uh, wh what better way uh, to demo uh, the fashion-based knowledge graphs than your fave game, uh, Fortnite? Uh, <laughs> number one game in the world, I'm sure you're all fans. Um, so after the conference, I'll upload a little example uh, on uh, my GitHub, at G Cushion. Um, so uh, a quick example, so if we uh, want to show all nodes in the graph, um, we can uh, perform a, a simple query like this. As you can see, it's uh, um, quite similar to uh, SQL. So this is uh, showing all the uh, outfits in uh, available, well, a subset of the outfits available uh, in the uh, Fortnite uh, game by Epic Games. Uh, we may want to say uh, find, just display all of the out outfits. Um, so uh, you can see them without the connections. And then as well, we can explore more interesting uh, tasks such as uh, find, so uh, Ninja is a big Fortnite player. How can I find uh, which uh, outfits um, we both like? Uh, so with the Ninja and uh, George as names, match a user likes outfit where the name is in names and then return those nodes and relationships. So in this case, uh, we discover that both uh, Ninja and uh, me uh, like uh, the flat jacky outfit. As a quick aside, you probably discovered that it's not always a frictionless process to uh, manage your different projects. Uh, so I just uh, thought I'd give a quick shout out to uh, PyM and uh, PipM. It's a fantastic tool for your project, and also it gives me an opportunity to include the uh, mandatory uh, XKCG uh, diagram, which uh, seems like all data science uh, presentations uh, must have. So one thing you may be interested in is uh, how to communicate a graph in the enterprise. Uh, so um, project managers will often ask, uh, how can we improve their customer experience? How much, uh, how much money can we make on this? Uh, data scientists might say, wow, looks like a neural network. Hold my pandas. <laughs> I'm on board. Backend engineers might say, why do we need a graph? Wh which graph uh, database uh, meets the requirements? And uh, data engineers might say, is your airflow dizzy? Is traversing through cyclic connections? <laughs> Where do I see the most value, va value with the knowledge graph? Well, improving customer experience, uh, such as by understanding uh, customer intent in search queries is a big one, and uh, connecting uh, further business entities within a business uh, for hyper-personalization, hyper I also believe is a big one as well as uh, deriving new knowledge via graph analysis and graph-based AI, and enabling new innovative applications by taking this new perspective on data, especially if it's naturally uh, highly connected data. So research, um, i just uh, talk very briefly about this. So machine learning is all about analyzing data to learn a model and using an algorithm that can be applied to make predictions on new data sets. Machine learning is not tied to a particular represent representation of data. Machine learning algorithms help us um, to discover meaning in the data sets, and uh, insights can be expressed as relationships between nodes in a graph. So graph databases enable efficient storage and traverse, traversal of uh, information about relationships. Therefore, a graph, therefore, graph data can be either input or output as, uh, as part of a machine learning uh, process. And uh, graph embeddings are one of the heavily researched uh, concepts at the moment uh, in the field of graph-based graph learning. I uh, won't say uh, too much on that as running out of time. Um, but I will summarize as uh, why use a knowledge graph. Um, uh, so uh, if you have a highly connected, uh, naturally highly connected data, then it, can make, uh, it may make a lot of sense for your project. 
uh, especially if you wanted to derive new insights uh, from a graph analysis and a graph-based AI, and um, enable stakeholders to easily visualize relationships as well in order to make informed decisions. And as a flexible schema to facilitate evolution as you uh, may wish to evolve, evolve the graph over time, adding more business entities into it. And uh, it is optimi highly optimized for storing and querying graphs. So uh, relationships are fundamental structure in the graph. So uh, following relationships in a graph is uh, a single lookup. So this is a really, really big thing. So it makes the operation blazingly fast compared to uh, a traditional uh, SQL database. The future, um, so almost finished. Uh, over 75% of uh, Fortune 100 have used a graph database, either adopted or piloted. And, it, and I expect that within the next uh, three years, that figure will reach 100%. Uh, it's a natural fit that graphs are ideal for storing, connecting, and making uh, inferences from uh, complex data. The future of, of uh, data science and anal analytics uh, lies in connecting data, semantics, and uh, deriving new insights from deep, indirect relationships. It's not only about the more obvious uh, direct relationships. Graph neural networks will uh, play an important role in AI's development. And the main reason that graphs have not uh, played uh, an important role in ML uh, so far is that legacy graph databases cannot deliver what is really needed for machine learning. Deep link graph an an analytics uh, for large data sets. So it's only recently that companies uh, uh, can use graphs at true scale. And uh, by integrating graphs with a deep learning, we're moving much more into a core understanding of uh, artificial intelligence, deep neural networks, and image recognition. I firmly believe that it's, uh, it's the intersection of a deep learning and a knowledge representation uh, with graph technology where the next evolution lies and where new disruptive companies are emerging. So. Uh, there's a little bonus here if you want to go on it afterwards. Uh, there's a tool I developed to create professional websites uh, from Markdown, Jupyter, and R Studio. It's available on uh, GitHub, uh, Gcushion. Uh, so it's uh, powering 100,000 uh, websites and um, uh, featured in uh, GitHub's blog recently. It's uh, great if you're an uh, academic uh, publishing papers or giving talks or all these kind of things. So it's designed specifically for um, creating markdown content for uh, talks, papers, publications, uh, slides, all of these things. Um, so that's it. Questions? Any questions? experimented with embeddings in practice and did you find them useful? Yes, yeah, so um, this is a, uh, uh, so the embedding part is uh, still, is, is a part that we're researching at the moment, so it's uh, a work in progress essentially, so it's uh, probably a bit early for us to say exactly how and what uh, this enhances within the business. I'm, I'm just wondering when we um, it came to external um, sources, um, how many people you are ended, ended with currently? Who told you to extract? Um, so how many nodes and relationships that, that we have in the graph? Um, so uh, we're capturing uh, all of the products in our catalog and then uh, uh, bunch of uh, taxonomy, fashion taxonomy nodes associated with them. Um, so it's a million plus. Uh, yeah, I can't provide the exact number, but over a million nodes uh, and uh, significantly more relationships. Yeah. Hey, thanks for your talk. Um, I just wanted to ask, you know the uh, code that you have, which is language scan, so what, uh, what language is that? Sorry, which language is, oh, it's the, cyp the, the SQL-like language, is uh, Cypher. So Cypher is the most, by far the most popular way to query a graph database as uh, Neo4, it's uh, developed by Neo4j, which is the primary uh, ven vendor for graph databases in the, this space at the moment. Okay, so we don't have any more time for more questions, but you can ask uh, the people outside. Keep your hand up. Thank you. Thank you very much.